All right, a couple of revelations by me, um, uh, partly being an idiot. The op amp that I'm using, I have it configured as an inverting amplifier. So the zero to five volts from my DAC ends up being zero to negative five volts uh, if I have a, uh, a one to one <laughs> uh, gain. If I have it with a, a tenth gain, or a fifth gain or whatever, it goes, instead of going between zero to one volt, it goes between zero and minus one volt, which means that my offset has to be larger than five volts. So anyway, um, and the regulator that I was using, I had it tied to five volts. Well, it can't get all the way to five volts. It has to have some burden voltage on it as well. So I've made a cut and jump here. So, uh, I have 13 volts coming into the regulator. So now I have a, a wide range of uh, offset voltage. So I can set it to anything and then I can go down, down in voltage depending on the gain of my, of my amplifier. Okay, so that was, that was brain freeze number one. Brain freeze number two was I was trying to get out 144 to 148 megahertz. Well, that's not right. I need to have one, 144 minus 10.7 and 148 minus 10.7 to come out. All right, so. <laughs> So I have it set up here. Sorry, it's not an NTSC, but I have it set out so that 148 megahertz is there and 144 megahertz is there. So the first first mark and the ninth the ninth mark, right? And then I'm uh, hot wiring the VCO and I'm inputting uh, this voltage. So uh, 148 megahertz is happening at 5.7 volts instead of those other calculations that I did. And then if I go down to uh, 144 megahertz minus 10.7. It's 4.2. So I need to go between 4.2 volts and 5.7 volts. Um, so that's a much, much different swing. Okay. So I need to have my offset set to that voltage because I'm going to start at zero and then I'm going to subtract off of that. So I need to start at 5.7 volts of offset um, to have my... Uh, to have my circuit work. So anyway, uh, yeah, kind of a revelation today. I don't know what I was thinking before. Anyway, I've also noticed some other problems. I'll get to that in, in a little bit later in the video, but uh, I, need to, I need to reset this thing up so that it's swinging between the right voltages and my VCO is swinging between the right frequencies. Um, so I think, I think the design is still fine. Uh, like I said, a little bit of tweaks here, a couple of cuts and jumps, but I think I'm still okay. Um, and we'll be able to control this. Uh, and uh, so that'll be my next step. All right, so I've hooked the board back in. I'm not hot wiring any longer. I'm, the voltage is coming out of the DAC. So I've set my uh, frequency to 148, which uh, is going to be 148 and 10.6. Seven, it's going to be 137.3. So we need 137.3, which is it is right now. Okay, so that's when I have zero volts on the DAC. And then as I uh, add volts to the DAC, it's going to go in the opposite direction, right? So Because it's negative voltages. All right. And so I need a little bit more room over here. I'm almost there. I need to come down to here. But anyway, it's working out. And so really all I need to do is set the... Uh, I need to set the uh, rewrite the software to have the right calibration data. Um, my DAC is stopping at 2484, and I can go all the way to, to 40, what, 4048? Is that, uh, anyway, it can go up higher. <laughs> so I should be able to get to that point there, and we'll still have plenty of resolution, so I'll just need to change the software. So, so that's really good. All right, so if you see, we have some funny little spurs here. I've kind of pointed those out before. And I've got a problem, I believe. And let me hook up, let me hook up my oscilloscope here so we can go take a look at it. Yep. And uh, I'm going to look at the, make sure this is all in camera. Uh, I'm going to put my, my uh, oscilloscope probe right on the VCO input. So that's the voltage that I'm controlling it with, right? And that should be a nice DC voltage. So here we are. And the DC voltage has got lots of ringing on it or something or other on it. So I don't know where that's coming from. I don't know if 
My op amp can't drive, the, it doesn't have enough drive current for the VCO. Sorry about my hand. Let me, let me see if I, can, uh, if I can trigger on this thing. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, so we're getting really weird, really weirdness. If I disconnect the VCO, that's nice and stable. So I think my, I think my op amp probably doesn't have enough drive current for the VCO. Um, so let me, uh, let me take out that, um, oh, I need to check. I have a high drive op amp, but I don't know if it can work from zero to five volts because that's what this op amp is operating off of right now. Or is it? What is that op amp operating on? I haven't, I don't remember my own schematic. Just a second. Uh, that op amp is, yeah, zero to five volts. Um, and I only need plus and minus a, a volt out of it, right? Um, but I don't know if my, I don't know if my other op amps will be able to handle it. So let me go investigate that. Oh, we might have to put in a buffer stage, uh, to, to drive the, uh, to drive the VCO better. I'm going to have to do a second board anyway. Um, I'm going to build a little board that has... Uh, the 8 volt power supply for the uh, VCO. It also has the uh, frequency counter circuitry, the, the pre selector and stuff like that on it. And so I can add a drive buffer to that. So we might have to add one more board uh, to, make, to make this guy happy and uh, to drive it. Um, so, yeah, I don't know where this, uh, where this is coming from. Um, if I. Let's see here. If I probe the, let's see. Let me, I'm going to probe the. That's the output of the op amp right now, and I'm going to disconnect the VCO, and you can see that it goes to uh, a nice stable voltage, and it's about in the, yeah, it's about in the middle. Hmm. Okay. Well. Anyway, it's interesting. All right. So things aren't as bad as I thought. Um, I measured the amount of current necessary to drive the uh, VCO, and it's very, very small. It's just, it's just inputting to the gate of, uh, of a FET, so there's like no current at all needed. So I don't really know why it's, uh, why it's bump, bumping up and down exactly, but I know how to fix it now. So that's the good news. Uh, the good news is it just needs a capacitor on it. <laughs> so um, the output of the op amp goes through a 50 ohm resistor and then to the uh, to the VCO. And so I've got a 50 ohm there anyway, but I'll just put a, uh, a uh, I'm going to jam a capacitor right in this connector here. Okay. And there's ground on this side and, and then the v, VCO uh, voltage on that side. So I'm just, I'm just adding a, uh, I'm adding capacitor and boom, <laughs> it fixes it. Uh, so that was with a 10 microfarad and let me put in a 0 0.01 microfarad and boom. So it takes very little capacitance to fix that problem. So, okay. Uh, problem solved. So I will add a, a, I think I'll add a 0.1 microfarad capacitor to the, to the board and uh, then uh, rewrite the software to go between the right frequencies. And we'll be, we'll do, we'll be done with that part. So I'm still waiting for the, um, uh, for the pre-selector to do the, uh, to do the um, frequency counter. So, Anyway, uh, I'm glad I was able to fix this easily.